When President Kennedy declared before Congress in 1962 that the country should have the ultimate goal of getting man to the moon and returning him safely, the space race had finally reached new heights. But the space race was in the midst, midst of something even greater and more terrifying, a nuclear arms race. Could space be used to get the upper hand on a nation when it comes to the war? The space race led man to the moon and caused them to overcome political barriers. And that makes it an important milestone in our world's history. From the Sputnik to the landing of the Mars rover, the space race has given man great advancements in space exploration. Space has captivated me ever since I was a child, and I have always wanted to explore it. I am constantly studying, reading, looking up facts, and staring into space to learn more about it and the history of, it, our, of our interactions with it. First, I will discuss the space race itself, and then I will discuss the landing of man on the moon. And finally, I will discuss the legacy of the space race. The space race was a race between the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, to reach outer space with their technology first. The beginning of the space race was plagued with relations between the United States and the Soviet Union due to the Cold War. It was in the midst of the Cold War where both superpowers were at ultimate tension and the brink of a nuclear war. During the Cold War, the two nations were desperately trying to get the upper hand on technology, which is why advanced space technology was so important. The two nations began the race by attempting to develop technology that can monitor levels of radioactivity from space, giving them the upper hand in the war. The space race had monumental setbacks, but also had extreme advances, with both, na both nations taking the lead on different fronts. The Soviet Union, after hearing that the United States had made advances towards la launching their first satellite, launched their satellite named Sputnik, and became the first ever nation to successfully get a satellite into space. The United States was embarrassed by the Soviets winning that first battle and launched their first satellite named Vanguard. The satellite exploded shortly after launch and, became, and they became the laughing stock of the race. In response to the embarrassment of the failure, President Eisenhower pushed Congress to establish NASA and passed the National Aeronautics Space Act. NASA's main lead was to get men into space. Once each nation had successfully gotten a satellite into orbit, they set their sights onto a more impressive goal, getting man into space. The United, nation, the United States created a project named Project Mercury, and their timeline looked very grim compared to the Soviets. Soviets were very far ahead, and by April 12, 1961, they beat the Americans once again and got a cosmonaut into space, into Earth's orbit. Even though the Americans had lost, only three weeks later did they finally get an astronaut into orbit. The beginning of the space race proved to be detrimental to the United States, but the next challenge was one that would put both sides on their toes, getting man to the moon. The moon is something that man has always looked up to, and now that they had finally broken the barrier in space, both nations were looking towards getting there. Following the extreme embarrassment that the nation had endured following the beginning of the space race, President Kennedy announced in 1962 that it was the goal of the nation to get man on the moon by the end of the decade. The Soviets wouldn't publicly agree to the race, but behind the scenes they were working desperately to beat us. Both nations launched, pro launched programs, Apollo for the United States and Soyuz for the Soviet Union, and designed spaceships to get man, get man there. Both sides, in a rush to beat the other, overlooked certain um, issues, and it set back progress for their launch. Shortly before the launch of the first Apollo mission, the entire crew was killed in an electrical fire that could not be controlled due to the, due to the environment of the cabin. The Soviets also had a catastrophe, and during re-entry, parachutes did not deploy, and the cosmonaut was killed on impact. Both nations continued to test different spacecrafts and correct mistakes, and in 1968, the United States began, became the first nation to get a man out of Earth's orbit and into the moons. 
On July, on July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 lift off from Kennedy Space Station, and on July 21st, Neil Armstrong became the first man to ever step foot on the moon. Apollo 11 returned back to Earth safely, making Americans the winner of the space race, keeping, and keeping President Kennedy's promise that man would step foot on the moon at the, by the end of the decade. After successfully landing man on the moon, the space race came to an end, and the advances that came from it were everlasting. The effects of the space race were monumental in technology for the time and paved the way for the scientists to create more technology. Following the end of the moon race, the re relations between the United States and the Soviet Union slowly began to improve. Both countries agreed to an Apollo-Soyuz test project where they would work towards docking the two crafts together. The mission was a success and the astronauts and cosmonauts exchanged ships, gifts, and, partaking, and started partaking in experiments. The space race led to great advancements in the United States due to their extreme embarrassment at the beginning. Following the intense failures at the beginning of the space race, the legislators decided that they wanted to place a greater <laughs> emphasis on math and science and pass the National Defense Education Act. So today I've discussed why the space race was so important. And in conclusion, even though the two nations were neck and neck, and even though they experienced extreme setbacks throughout the process, the advancements that man made were everlasting and will serve for centuries to come.